No, I'm done. We've done my report. We're up to the administrator's report there. Is that a hammer? Oh, yes. Okay, so the other item I have is we have students in government and come every year. We need to select a date in May. I'd like to have a few dates to send to the school to pick from, so I made some suggestions with the calendar in front of me. I can tell you unofficially that May 21st is the fourth grade play in spring college. There you go. Scratch that right off. Okay. Yeah. Which day was that? Tuesday the 19th. I'm probably rehearsing. I'm going to go to my calendar. Which day was that? May 21st. Fourth grade play. Hey Tina, May 14th is also the curriculum fair. All right, look, we've got a right. wow. Thank you. And May 19th is the Board of Ed meeting. How about the 28th? The 28th, 8th grade students will not be here, they're in Gettysburg. Let's go to Gettysburg. <laughs> wow. So, since you're here. May is very busy for us every Thursday. You have the school calendar. Can you suggest some dates that I can ask the school if they can do it on those nights? Um, we try and do it on a Tuesday or a Thursday. We, we no. can do the second and fourth Tuesday, so there are council meetings, but every other day I think is. And third, two, third Tuesday is their meeting. You could do the 5th, the 13th, the 20th. That would be Wednesday, so. No, Wednesday. Right. Uh, yeah, one well, the 28th, the last one, Thursday the 28th is okay, right? No, 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 no the 8th graders are not be here. The whole oh, whole that's the last time. Oh. Yes. Okay, when is the board today? May 4th of May is 27th. That's okay, correct. Okay, she said the 5th, the 13th, the 20th. That gives me three days to ask. Everybody good with that? Right. They're Wednesdays. Fifth? No. Well, the 5th is a Tuesday. Right. No, the 13th oh. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. It's the first. It's the first Tuesday. May 5th. May 5th. 13th. What was the other one? I'm sorry. May 20th. 20th. No, 13th, 20th, but Wednesdays? Oh, both Wednesdays. So I've got to just check our calendar. Just, just I, I can't make the 20th. Okay, point out. Yeah. Yeah. All right, 5th and 13th are okay by May. Yeah. 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 Okay, I will confirm with the school and let you guys know what they Thank you. Thank you. Any unfinished business with the council? Yesterday afternoon, Council President Bill Neerstad, Councilwoman Sarah Podesta, and myself met with New Jersey Transit about increasing the amount of train stops in Garland. We discussed the ridership from Cranford, which is 1350, Westfield is 2500, and Garland is 100. As much discussion, it seemed to me that Garland's greatest ally is keeping New Jersey Transit informed in our efforts in securing parking spots for commuters and our redevelopment plan for the future. As we're asked to submit a letter detailing all our efforts to increase parking and potentially new ridership to New Jersey Transit for their consideration. Yeah, Mayor, thank you. Just to add to that, uh, that, that basically was it. We met for an hour, and uh, just so the residents uh, recognized, we didn't wait to this meeting expecting New Jersey Transit to say, hey, what do you want? You know, we'll give you more stops. They, they really took time and explained to us how adding each individual stop really upset things up and down the line. And I know myself, just coming home from Plainfield, I used to get, I caught the 5.30 train for 13 years, now it's 5.44. And I know it's because of the stops and what they've added. Uh, what was positive though, although they couldn't give us anything, was um, at the end of the meeting they actually said to us, or asked us, if, I mean, if was, you know, bold, capitalized, 24 font, uh, we could add something, um, what would your priorities be? And we looked at the schedule and there are 20 stops that other towns get that we don't get. Um, and we felt that, first off, on uh, there, I think it was more events, uh, event activities, event schedule than anything else, you can leave here and catch a train into Newark to see the Devils or see something going on at the Art Center, but no way to get home. And so they're going to look at evening coming back from New York, evening coming back from New York during the week, end of the weekend. And um, the other option, the other thought was one more train in the morning. So that's what we laid out for them to think about. And no promises, but 
the indicator that we look at. Between the morning would be a one two five or just another um didn't specify. Um I don't think that is a high possibility. But uh, that was clearly where there are so many other stops in other towns that we're lacking. Um, I believe, and I don't have any other basis on other than that if we were, if they were able to provide one, um, I wouldn't bet on going to New York. Any other comments? Um, I, I only have one comment. Um, besides the fact that it was good to see the gentleman I talked to over the phone and via email about uh, this new shelter that would be larger at our train station. So it was good to see him, and he said that likely it's looking like May that it will um, be installed. So that's positive news. Um, also, similar topic, with the, especially with the direct rides. I know that the um, Raritan, Val oh, I'm sorry, Raritan Valley Rail Coalition uh, is also willing to have maybe a couple people from their group meet with us as well. And that's something Council President Nearson and I have been talking about to um, try to help um, advocate for Garwood within that group that advocates for themselves as well. So we're working on it. <coughs> Anything else? Okay. I'll just continue on my report. Uh, I attended Union County Mayor's Roundtable that was held Monday, March the 2nd, with the majority of the county spending either the mayor or the representative. The presenters were Muhammad Jolly, the freeholder chairman, Al Fayel, the Union County Manager, Brady Park, acting prosecutor, Joseph Prime, Union County Sheriff, Andrew Moran, Director of the Department of Public Safety. <coughs> uh, we also were updated on the uh, Pilgrim Pipeline, Economic Development, the Response Team, brought, excuse me, Brownfields, updated on uh, emergency contact information as well as various county topics, and we can follow up by extensive question, thank you, in the answer period. Uh, also, as uh, Councilman Matthew mentioned, uh, on February 28th, Council and, uh, Matthew, Councilwoman Tedesco, and myself attended budgeting for elected official seminar. Uh, the main topics were budget law, budget planning, <laughs> capital and debit planning, uh, state aid, cost of labor negotiations, capital budgeting, uh, the presentation was very informative. Uh, for more details, anyone would like to visit uh, the League of Municipalities. The whole presentation is on the website. Well, thank you. Okay, now we'll have comments from our council. Uh, Councilman Martin. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Matthew. Uh, yes, thanks, Mayor. A couple of things. I uh, went to the uh, freeholder meeting on Thursday, uh, February 26th. Uh, there was the one item uh, that I thought was of particular relevance to Garwood um, was uh, Freehold Bruce Bergen mentioned that uh, he was with uh, Senator Menendez before he got busy with other things. Uh, getting any, uh, uh, they got a $1 million grant for an Army Corps of Engineers study for flooding on the Raleigh River. Right. Now, I think that just sounded to me very preliminary, um, but I think it's something that you definitely stay on top of. Um, but I that that was um, again, uh, I just wanted to mention, I mentioned most of what I had here about that municipal seminar, so that's very good. Very good. And I really like, I really like the mayor. Um, the mayor came out and he, uh, he said, you know, I'm the mayor of Wharton Borough, and uh, next year, Wharton Borough will be desperate. And uh, everyone was applauding, and I thought it was just fabulous. They, he and his business administrator, there. Everything they did was multi-year planning and execution, multi-year planning and execution, and setting goals. And I think that they really just showed um, when you have leadership and you have goals and you focus on it over a long period of time, um, you can really get some really great things done. That you know they, they definitely find out obstacles that the state puts in the way. There wasn't a lot of excuse making. They said, okay, this is the environment we're in, this is what we're doing. Um, so I just found it very refreshing. Uh, one of the things they mentioned after you left was, uh, this is a very good question, um, do rateables bring extra tax revenue into the town? So the people tell me, yes or no? No, it really thinks so. yes, but... Yeah. The answer is no, Councilman Nears, that's right. It redistributes the taxes among other other uh, rateables. So that was very good. I think on some level I had known that, but I never heard it stated that way. Um, 
years. So that's uh, that was that on that. Uh, finally, I was at an event last night. Um, I got to hear from our state representatives, uh, particularly Assemblywoman Munoz. Uh, she is moving ahead with the sick day payout, um, either restriction or uh, abolition. And that was something that this council had unanimously supported, and she's been pushing ahead with that. Um, also, one other thing that came up, uh, I was uh, walking uh, on Willow with my mother, we're looking for a house for my sister in town, and we were stopped by a, uh, a resident and told our five-year plan, uh, five-year plan for how he's going to save up to get out of our work is taxes too high, it's moving south. So I was reminded um, uh, by this, by Assemblywoman Munoz, she and Senator Kane are moving ahead with um, a bill to get rid of the uh, estate tax in New Jersey. Um, and that's something that New Jersey, as you may know, or may not know, is one of two states that actually has an estate tax and an inheritance tax. So that's a nice distinction that we have. And I just think particularly with all the senior citizens we have in town, um, New Jersey still goes by the old $675,000 exemption. Uh, as you know, you pay off a house in New Jersey and a couple of assets, you get that really quick. And it's, uh, you don't get the federal taxes for $2 million, but you hit that very quickly. Um, I'd like to see this council kind of provide a resolution to support that. Um, when Senator Kane and Assembly Mark uh, introduced that. Um, and I'm sure they're going to have co sponsors from across the uh, across the country. And uh, that's all for my report now. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Petrucelli? Uh, thank you. Councilwoman Tarantino? Uh, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> so last month, the Administrative Review Committee had put forward a policy and Council passed the policy that states basically that council will be provided any ordinances um, prior to them being put on the agenda for introduction. And um, this would give us the opportunity to make any updates or amendments um, at, that, at this time before introduction. And then Tina would have time to revise them on the ordinance and, um, <clears throat> and then it would be put on introduction next month, the following month, and we wouldn't have that whole discussion mm -hmm. and be trying to amend things at that time. So tonight you have a few ordinances that you received in your packet um, for that reason. Um, one is to amend Article 8B, uh, which is the Borough Administrator Chapter 5 of the Code, and it's to establish the position of an Assistant Borough Administrator. And the other is to amend Article 8A uh, in Chapter 5 to establish the um, position um, on the Office of Aging. And, and those duties, because that position was never actually established, even though we have the position. And we also have um, the ordinance to amend 2137, although I think it might say 2147 on your paper, which is incorrect, um, which is the ordinance about uh, resident preferential permit parking. So tonight will be the time, if, if you should have always reviewed it and spent some time to talk about it, have questions, make suggestions, or, or not, if they're perfect. Um, so I don't know if you want to continue with council comments or if we could, um, if you want to talk about those ordinances now. Okay. Any questions start on the air? I'm okay. I'm right. <laughs> um, I guess the first thing is, I realize that these first two ordinances just establish the position. It doesn't uh, point to anyone or uh, right. obviously the, uh, the salaries to be um, uh, develop later, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one of the things I was wondering about is the the borough administer, um, the assistant borough administrator. Is that a civil service title? And if not, what are the qualifications a person would need to to have that to qualify for that position? We don't have civil service. So then, what are the qualifications? Well, the, the duties are listed here. Duties, so you well, you don't usually have qualifications in an ordinance. I mean, you set the like qualifications. I, mean, the ordinance I, I agree with you. The ordinance just doesn't generally set qualifications. Councilman, I have, I have mm -hmm. done qualifications in my career. Okay, that would be appreciated, sure. Okay. Just so we know the, the type of sure, experience you. and what have you that, that you, you would need for the position. Yeah, if you could. Sure. Okay. Um, I guess the same thing in regards to the, um, uh, the director. Director on aging. Yeah. Okay. Um, fine. Okay. Yeah. And um, getting back to the last one, the parking, and and yeah, it's twenty one thirty seven, is right? Yeah. 
It's 2137. Okay. I, I, does everyone's sheet say 2140? Um, it's referenced twice on there. The very top says 2147. And then you, um, in the middle it says 2137. Tina, that means about the this is an order prepared by you, so if there's a parking one, you're saying that if the uh, numbers are different. Yeah. There's a parking one. Want to see it? Yeah. 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 This is 47. This is 47. I think it's one other thing. Are we in commission? No, no, no. We're just discussing this. We're not introducing anymore until we discuss. Okay. Or is it says an ordinance to amend 2147 that should be 37. Okay. I looked it up, it's 37. 37, yeah, I see. Oh. Right. Okay. okay, and and, and, and the only other thing was and, and, and maybe this is a silly comment, but you know, we were the first one I asked. But the ordinance states in section um, 21.8b, it says no person shall park any vehicle on the streets for more than two hours duration between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Shouldn't there be some type of exception written in here except for those, those residents who have what is it preferred parking permits? I mean, they're allowed to park there. Yes, it doesn't work. No, I understand that, but shouldn't, shouldn't that, that section states no one can park there. And if you look at 21.8, which um, Councilwoman Tarantino was kind enough to get for me, I, I don't see any type of cross-reference. I think letter B should state something except for those who have who possess valid um, residential preferred parking permits. Well, I mean, that's not how you write these ordinances. If you want it in there, we'll put it in there. So, because I have 2133 <coughs> issuance of permits, and I really think we need something to be that allows those people who have those permits to park there. Well, we do allow them to park there. It's not that they can't park there. It's whether you wanted to say that specifically in the ordinance because you're not. You're only looking at one of two ordinances. Um, if you were 